This is the first agreement since that hostage crisis where the U.S. and Iran have fundamentally agreed on a major security issue. This solves, if it works, the most pressing nuclear proliferation issue in the world, but it's more than that. It's a gateway. It opens up the possibility of conversations on many other issues. The fight against ISIS, we both agree. Stabilizing Afghanistan, we both agree. Ending the civil war in Syria, we both agree. But not everybody agrees on everything. Watch and listen carefully as the other shoes drop following the Iran nuclear deal. A rejoicing nation that leaves the ever so tiny hint of turning a country around. The inevitable war machine getting back into business. And amidst all the slamming and rejoicing over this contract, let's ask how many on both sides have even read the entire deal and are in a position to understand the ramifications. Let's dig into the meat of this story. He's a former senior political writer across the national media scene, veteran political analyst, and author of the new political novel, What Makes It Worthy? Let's make this conversation worthy, if you will, right now with David Paul Kuhn. David, thanks so much for joining us. Let's go ahead and dig right into the meat of what is Iran here. Because in the last 24, 48 hours, we've had a lot of people, mostly presidential candidates, who've hammered away at this deal. And a lot who've even said, well, wait a minute, let's look at it. But here's the one thing I get. I can't find many of them who have actually read the deal. That probably wouldn't surprise you in the least when it comes down to Washington politics. It doesn't surprise me. I hope they do read the deal. I mean, that's the real question, because obviously there's this pressure today on politicians and journalists to comment immediately about everything. And the problem here is that the devil is in the details, and it's very hard to form a truly decisive opinion without looking at those details. That said, we have the framework. We knew the framework within minutes. And one can understand why there are passionate points of view on all sides based on that framework. It's fair to say, though, one of the big passion points here is that people see money going to Iran. They see it a country that basically foments terrorism around the Middle East. And they see the mullahs still in charge there, who every time they get a chance, matter of fact, there was a cartoon I saw today, it actually had a mullah holding a bomb, shaking someone's hand and saying, death to America. That's what we know about the people who run this country, and that scares people, and rightly so. Yeah, that's the key point. In other words, even if this deal succeeds, as the president says, what will happen is, on conventional weaponry, Iran will become significantly stronger. And to be a hegemon in that region, Iran uses conventional weaponry. So this deal will make Iran a far stronger nation in that region. And as you noted, Iran funds, supports uh, organizations that are enemies of the United States. Well, here's something else, too, because right on the heels of the president's press conference the white house then announces that they have made an offer to israel to increase u.s military aid in the wake of the iran nuclear agreement now there's a lot of people who are going to say this is necessary we've got to do this but then again there's others saying wait a minute here we are again we're back to militarizing we're putting more potential boots on the ground more money into the middle east this i think is probably scarier to a lot of people other than what we've just talked about because then iran comes out and says don't worry, we get our money, we're going to go out and buy fighter planes. This thing could spiral out of control. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you can analyze the, the increased support to the Israeli military as really uh, meaningless in the sense that Israel's not going to say no to more dollars to fund the IDF, but to Israel, they would have much rather had a different deal. And so uh, Israel, for obvious reasons, as are the Saudis, etc., are really upset about this agreement. And the Iranians, Iranians will become a more powerful force, whether they use that force to continue to destabilize our interests in the Middle East our, and our allies. That's the question. And history says they will. All right, I got about 60, 70 seconds left. Here's something else that's being talked about. The hostages, the four Americans that are still being held in Iran. I want you to listen. Here's Dan Levinson, the son of Iranian hostage Robert Levinson, with this message. It's never going to be enough until, until my dad is home. And um, I just saw that President Obama uh, spoke about it a few, a few uh, minutes ago. And we can only hope that he now sees that opportunity to make my dad priority number one at this point. That Now that this deal is done, I think my father's safe return home should be the top of the agenda for the U.S. and Iran as they go forward. David, I only got about 30 seconds or so left here. Major Garrett of CBS News asked the president a rather pointed question that the president admonished him for asking with regard to that. Do you think Major got it right to ask a tough question of the president in that setting? 
Major got it precisely right. Even if his question was hyperbolic, the problem is that presidents expect stagecraft. They expect journalists to, as a colleague of mine, be props in these scenarios. Major punctured that. He undercut the stagecraft. That's extremely important, and it's critical for reporters to remember they are not there to add to the imagery. They are there to challenge a president, and this is something I talk a lot about in my political novel, and I think that Major was in the right. We're going to have to have you back soon. We'll talk a little bit more about the political novel, but we're all out of time right now. But we do want to make everybody and remind them that your book is called What Makes It Worthy? And it is about what goes on in that intrigue in politics. And I'm with you. Ask the tough questions every time. That's what they get the job for. David Paul Kuhn, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. We'll continue to watch and see what the president has to say next and see if anybody asks him a very difficult question. Coming up next, the foreign affairs mess the next POTUS will inherit. Dick Morris has the word on the hard line.